Hi, I'm Roger Montgomery, and welcome to this week's Video Insight. Today, we're diving into the reporting season highlights for the tech and retail sectors. There's a lot to cover, so strap in. Starting off with the retail sector, financial year 23, or FY23 results for the retail and consumer sectors were mixed. A quick overview of earnings per share saw mid single digit declines in the second half of 2023. Predictions for 2024 and 2025 are now down by half a percent and one and a half percent respectively. With respect to broker earnings revisions, companies including Harvey Norman, Treasury Wine Estates and West Farmers elicited the biggest upgrades with some brokers upgrading Harvey Norman by almost 20% for FY24, citing higher franchisee sales and profit before tax margins. On the flip side, Coles prompted analysts to downgrade on the back of lower supermarket EBIT margins, thanks believe it or not to theft, and Super Retail Group thanks to a weaker outlook for Rebel Sports. Declining sales in discretionary retail in the second half of FY23 has continued in the first few months of FY24, but an expected compression in EBIT margins was less than expected. The rising cost of doing business, or what we call CODB, is a focal point with some operators noting domestic transport, technology and labour costs are particular pain points. Interestingly, the cost of doing business growth for the second half of FY23 surpassed revenue growth and the forecast for FY24 predicts even more pressures on the cost of doing business side. Elsewhere, depreciation and amortisation and net interest are on the rise, impacted significantly by higher interest rates and increased post-Australian Accounting Standards B16 occupancy costs. Now, here's a word of caution. While the reporting season had its silver linings and was better than expected, the Australian consumer is still treading carefully thanks to increased cost of living pressures. This is evident in the changing spending habits uh, of consumers, with trends like trading down in apparel and food and an inclination towards at-home consumption. I caught up with a friend at the weekend who works for a large hardware chain and he noted a definite decrease in basket sizes. And this is something that's being reported more widely by customers in the discretionary retail space. Some analysts have suggested investors focus their interest on businesses that target the affluent purchaser, such as treasury wine estates, the younger purchaser like teenagers without rent pressures, think La Visa, and retailers that benefit from lower priced products and the trend of trading down, think West Farmers own Kmart as examples. And just today, we've heard that consumer confidence remains in the doldrums. Switching gears to the tech realm, performance was pretty much in line with expectations. Major beats included Megaport and Hanson, while misses were seen from Seek, thanks to a normalisation in job volumes, Next DC on the back of higher capex due to demand, and Appen. Readers here at the blog will note we've been pointing out the weaknesses in Appen's business model from way back in 2019. With the share price now 96% off its highs, our view about the long-term prospects for the company's suite of services is broadly unchanged. Car sales also beat expectations. One thing that caught our attention in reporting season was more tech growth names downgrading on the back of higher depreciation and amortisation and capex. This of course suggests cash flow will be a talking point in the next six months and perhaps the next 12 months. It's also fair to say analysts have underestimated the leverage these companies have to rising interest rates. A lot of companies prominently featured AI in their commentary or noted an intention to enhance their AI cap capabilities, but it was also the case, as we've noted here in several blog posts, that monetization is going to be the key sticking point. And monetization will be a key to a sustained increase in share prices. That monetization currently remains elusive. Okay, now that was a lot and we've only discussed two sectors. We'll continue to keep you informed and updated with key trends as we notice them emerging or evolving in other sectors, so stay tuned. And in the meantime, continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.